But look at this. This is something that you should see. This is something that's sort of kind of should burn into your retinas from these days. This is an interview that took place today, Tuesday, in Afghanistan, live on Afghan television at the studios of Tolo, the independent and very, very popular TV network in Afghanistan. That is a top Taliban official that you see on your screen right there being interviewed live on set by a female anchor for Tolo, whose name is Beheshta Argand. She's doing a one-on-one, -on -one, face to face inter interview with him live in studio at Tolo. Afghanistan has excellent female reporters and anchors and journalists, and they have been singled out by the Taliban and other extremists for particularly intense threats and intimidation and even murder. And news organizations the world over face all kinds of challenges, including intense threat environments for their journalists for all kinds of reasons right now. But with Tolo in Afghanistan, this incredibly successful, incredibly popular and trusted network in Afghanistan, They've got their fem which, has been, which has been set up since, since 2004, since the U.S., since after the U.S. invaded in 2001. Tolo, this incredibly important cultural force in Afghanistan, like I say, very, very, very popular. They've got their female anchors and their female reporters and their female journalists out there today face first as the Taliban literally take over their country. Right? It is inspiring and terrifying in equal measure. I do not envy them the bravery it takes to do their work right now. Joining us now is Latfullah Najafizada. He's the head of Tolo TV News in Afghanistan. Mr. Najafizada, I'm, I'm so grateful that you were able to take time to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rachel, for having me. And thank you for the very nice words you said. Well, I'm, I am almost sure that my perspective from here, looking at what's going on in Afghanistan today, both in the news business and generally, I am almost sure that I am getting something wrong. It is refracted through so much distance and through so many different lenses. Let me give you a chance to tell me if any of anything that I explained there was wrong or if you think that I'm putting the, 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 the emphasis on, on anything wrongly and if there's some other way we ought to be looking at things. No, I think, um, the, you know, the, the, the past 20 years, has been an extraordinary journey, and we are into this new chapter. We're trying to make sense of it. We're trying to see if this is going to work. Uh, I think the bravery of media, which is probably the only lasting a, um, a segment of uh, what Afghanistan has built in the past 20 years, is, is trying to see if it's going to work. And colleagues like Behishta Argand, you know, are back at work uh, interviewing the Taliban. We don't know how it's going to unfold. Uh, we don't know uh, what the new um, uh, administration in Kabul, the Taliban government, uh, how they will they react long term. I hope that people like Behishta Argand and other journalists like Hasiba Thakpal, like Zahra, like Anissa, who are the backbone of our newsroom will be able to do their work. These women who you describe as the backbone of your newsroom, first of all, if they're listening tonight, I hope they're hearing that um, and they know that their boss, <laughs> their boss believes that about them. What sort of I mean contingencies it. do you—and and I can tell. Um, what sort of contingencies do you have to plan for? Obviously, there's so much uncertainty. There's been lip service paid by Taliban officials thus far to allowing the media writ large to continue to do its work, to allowing women to participate um, under some sort of restrictions that they are not yet describing. But the, the fear among Afghan female journalists, who we have been in touch with, is palpable. I know that you and your colleagues are very aware of the reality of these sorts of threats. How do you plan? How do, how do, you, how do you make plans for the future? I think we were already thinking about trying to save media uh, and Tolo in a way that we will be able to continue our work uh, remotely or from other places that was well underway. But the speed of the transformation and development, I think, were unprecedented. It took many, many people by surprise. So, so as we speak, I think I think what's what's crucially important is that we should be able to continue our operation in Kabul, and then in the same time, we should also explore 
other opportunities, how can we uh, be able to do it freely without interference, without um, a lot of middling, without dic getting uh, dictated? I think that is uh, that depends on um, how the relationship will unfold with the Taliban. I must say there is so much lack of uh, clarity and uh, there is so much uncertainty still there, still in the air. Hmm. Let me ask, a, 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 I guess, a sort of sensitive question. It's sensitive only because I hope it doesn't betray my own ignorance. <laughs> so it's sensitive to me. Um, is there a way that the, the Western media um, and that some of the nonprofit organizations and journalistic associations who support freedom of the press worldwide and who stand up for journalists worldwide, are there things that the rest of us who believe in the free press and the rest of us in the media worldwide can do to support Afghan journalism and Afghan women journalists? Or is that is it dangerous to talk in those terms now? Because anything that's seen as a, a Western outreach um, would necessarily be targeted or would potentially put um, put even more of a target on, on your folks who are doing all of this hard work. Can we help or would we only hurt by trying to help? I think, I think yes, of course you can help. Of course the international community can help. I think the media in Afghanistan can be only supported if the country is helped, if the country is assisted. And that can be only done uh, when those in charge are held accountable. Now that uh, there is going to be a new government, how that new government is shaped, how inclusive and broad-based that new government is, how a principled that new administration is. If we have any hope in that, if there is anything that the international community can do to change the environment, so within that environment, media can survive. Otherwise, if we talk about individuals, if we talk about specific things, then the only thing we talk about is evacuation. Hmm. Latfullah Naja Fizada, the head of Tolo TV News in Afghanistan, which itself is a uh, remarkable story of uh, success and creativity and resilience and adaptation under uh, intense and bizarre circumstances. Uh, thank you so much for your work tonight. Um, stay in touch with us, please, and please convey our best wishes to you and all your colleagues as you go through this really difficult transition. Thanks so much, Rachel.